Hi guys, let's talk a little bit about uh, the wheel and axle. Okay, so that we're going to start off with something pretty simple since we're talking about wheels. Let's talk about circles and make sure we understand those first. Uh, let's say that I have a circle here and let's just say that we're given a radius for that circle. And I don't know what that radius is, but let's say, uh, let's make up a number here. 10 would be a great number, wouldn't it? Okay, so let's say that we have 10 um, inches for the radius of the circle. Remember that we have some formulas here, and for now we have area formulas, circumference formulas, all kinds of stuff that you're going to be learning in your math class. For now, we're interested in probably circumference, okay? Because the big thing is, as I travel around the circle, we're interested in forces and distances when we're talking about our um, about our simple machine stuff. And so we want to know if I spin this circle, how far does it go around the circle? You know, if I made one rotation just like that, how far would that be? Okay, and so we have a cool little formula here that you haven't learned about in your math class. You probably should have. It's circumference of a circle. That's the distance around the circle, the arrow that I just drew, is equal to 2 pi times the radius of the circle. 2 pi times the radius of the circle. Okay, now there is a, a different way of calculating that, but before we go on to that second formula, let's just understand this. Oh, hold on. My lights just went off. If you notice the change in lighting, just a second. All right, there we go. All right, so the uh, the formula here then tells us that if I want to find the circumference of the circle, that distance for one rotation, that would simply be 2 pi times, in this case, 10. And uh, I can take the 2 and 10 and combine those two, so it's really 20 times pi. And in this class, we're going to go ahead and use 3.14 for pi. Uh, you probably have a pi button on your calculator if you want to use that. But if I take 20 times 3.14, I'm going to get a grand total of 62.8 inches. Okay, so the circumference, the distance around that circle is 62.8 inches. I could also say, you know what, if I took this wheel and I rolled it down a hill or rolled it down the street and it rotated one time that it would have traveled in a straight direction, it would have traveled 62.8 inches for each turn. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, uh, if I didn't want to give 10 inches, that's the radius, I could have easily changed it up and maybe done something like this. You know, if it's 10 inches halfway across and then there's like another 10 there, that means I could have said if I wanted to, the grand total here all the way across would have been 20 inches, right? So I have easily could have done that. And in that case, I would have had the diameter, okay? So if I'm working with the diameter, if it's all the way across, then my formula simply changes instead of two pi times the radius, it's pi times the diameter. Now, in that case, if I was given a diameter of 20, then notice that I would have circumference is pi times 20. Oh, look at that. 20 times pi, pi times 20, it's the same thing, right? So the circumference in this case would have been 62.8 inches also, okay? And the reason the formulas are the same is because if you look at this, they both have a pi, right? This one has 2 times the radius. Well, if I double the radius, then that piece right there would turn into the diameter, right? So it's all really the same thing, okay? So with that being said, the only thing I really want to do then is what if we compare that to like say a smaller circle, right? What if it's five instead of 10, okay? So let's say here I have a radius of five inches. What is the circumference in this problem? Well, uh, that'd be pretty simple to figure out. Um, it would be two pi times five, which two and the five combined to make a 10 times a pi, and that would be 31.4 inches. Right? So the circumference went from 62.8 inches to 31.4. It cut, it cut in half because we cut the wheel in half, right? So let's do one more thing. Let's say that it spins um, a number of times. It spins eight times, right? So if this wheel spins eight times, if it's rolling down the road and eight spins later we stop it, how far down the road has it traveled, okay? So if it spins eight times, then each time it spins, it would travel 31.4 inches down the road, okay? It would go 31.4, there's one revolution, 31.4 more, there's a second revolution, so on and so forth, eight times. So if we just take eight times 31.4, we'll figure out how much it spins total. And on my calculator, hold on, went down, I'm using my phone here because I can't find my regular one. 31.4 times eight would be 251 inches down the road, okay? 
So that's kind of an example of how we might work with circles in this upcoming thing. And you might be sitting here going, well, wait a second, that's not simple machines at all. And you're right, it's not. But with the wheel and axle, we have to understand this property of circumference and how it works if we're going to be able to work with force times distance with circles, which we do for wheel and axles. So there's the first video. I'll have one more, I think, coming maybe, where I do an example problem with, uh, with mechanical advantage of wheel and axle.